Hey, this is Josh. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make rice with a pressure cooker. I'm going to talk about why I think it's the best way to cook rice, especially a lot of rice. And we're going to talk a bit about the science behind how this works. And um, yeah, let's, let's get into it. So today I'm going to be making a mixture of brown rice and white rice. Um, brown rice is definitely the better of the two in terms of uh, you know, good nutrition, but I do like to mix the two because brown rice does taste a little bit bland and I find white rice helps with that. Um, of course I don't just eat rice on its own though, I usually eat it with like a curry or kimchi or something like that, you know, I, I rarely eat it on its own anyways, but um, yeah, that's, that's how I'm going to be doing things today. Um, rice is just such an easy food to make, especially in a pressure cooker as you'll see today. Um, and we're actually going to get into a little bit of math with it too. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, the rice to water ratio because in order to cook rice, you definitely need some kind of liquid for the rice to absorb. So, um, yeah, we'll get into a bit of math today, a little bit of science and, um, yeah, we'll really compare how to cook rice in a pot compared to cooking it in a pressure cooker and how there's a really big difference between the two. So I'm going to start off with explaining how to make rice inside of a pot. And for this example, I'm just going to make one cup of white rice just to show you how it's done. And the important thing with cooking rice in a pot is the ratio. Okay, so how much rice you use compared to how much water you're supposed to use. Now, most types of rice, for one cup of rice, you do two cups of water. Okay, so if you're making two cups of rice, you're going to want four cups of water. And if you're making three cups of rice, you're gonna want six cups of water and so on. Um, and now the big reason for that is, and you'll see in the next part of the video here, that there's two things going on. The rice is gonna be absorbing the water, so it's cooked, but it's also gonna be evaporating a lot of water. And we'll, we'll see what that looks like uh, firsthand here. But um, yeah, so it's really important to know that ratio. And you'll see that once we get to the pressure cooker, there's actually gonna be a little bit of a different ratio as well. But first, let's cook this rice. So to start things off, I have my pot on my smallest burner right now, cause it's a pretty small pot, so that makes sense. You wanna use a small burner for a small pot. I have my rice and my water inside of the pot, and I have the lid covering it as well. And we're just gonna keep it like this until it gets to a boil. So here's one big downside to using a pot. As you can see, our water is almost boiling. It's pretty much boiling. And we have this foam that is building up inside of our pot. And if we keep the lid on, and even if we leave it for just a minute, eventually that's gonna overflow. And then we have a big mess we have to deal with, right? And if we're doing this in a pressure cooker, if you're doing it correctly, we shouldn't have to deal with some big mess afterwards. So you really have to be paying attention when using a pot to cook rice. And that's definitely one big downside. So now this is boiling. We can just take the lid off for a second here just to see what it looks like. And you can see all that little bit of steam that's coming off of the pot. That is actually water evaporating. That is actually water in a gas form and it's evaporating. And if I just let this boil for, for even longer, more of that water is going to evaporate until eventually the water's gone and the rice has absorbed a bunch of it. And um, yeah, but usually when you're cooking rice this way, at this point, you would turn it down to medium. Okay, so it was on high before. I'm going to turn it down to medium. Now, if I put the lid back on as it is, even though I turned down the heat, that is still going to overflow eventually. And again, we'll have a mess we have to deal with. So one trick that I know my mom used to do this when I was growing up, she used to just leave the lid kind of on the side there. That way, some of the heat can stay inside of the pot and some of that steam can also be released so we don't have a big mess on our hands afterwards with the foam overflowing, okay? Um, and even with this method, it, you know, if you don't leave a big enough gap between the lid and the pot, you're still going to get a bit of overflow, which isn't good. So, I mean, you can even see now the bubbles are starting to build up and eventually this is just going to go go out of the pot. Yeah, there we go. And now we have a mess. So that's a sign that you should probably turn it down a little bit more. 
And yeah, from there you just let the pot sit until the rice is cooked, um, you know, probably about 15 minutes if I were to guess. Really depends on how much rice you're cooking and what kind of rice you're cooking. But from here, we're gonna move back over to the pressure cooker. So with my rice that I have going on the stove right now in the pot, I've actually turned it down to low and I'm just gonna let it sit there and cook. So um, you can ignore the part I said about keeping it on medium heat. That was definitely way too hot and it kind of shows how often I cook uh, rice in a pot these days because I always do it in a pressure cooker. And I wanna talk a little bit about how this works. So how a pressure cooker works is first of all, you put whatever you're cooking in here into this big pot right here. And how it works is when you have the lid on properly and you don't have the valve open or anything, you put in your settings and what's happening is it keeps all the heat inside of the pressure cooker and barely any gas is released from it. So it's just keeping heat in very well building a lot of pressure inside. That's why it's called a pressure cooker. So yeah, that's just kind of the quick explanation about how it is. Um, now I'll get a little bit into some of the parts of it really quick as well. So on the top part of the pressure cooker, which is just the lid, right? This comes right off. There you go. Um, there is a few things to note. Um, you have this little exhaust here. Whoops. You have this little exhaust here and that allows like a little bit of the gas to be released. Um, you know, just so the pressure doesn't build up too, too much that this, this thing's gonna like explode or anything. You also have a manual release here as well. When you push that button, it will release more gas out of the inside of this. So that's usually what you do after you finish cooking. But what a lot of recipes suggest, and I do this with my rice as well, is when it's done cooking and this thing beeps, you just turn it off, unplug it, and just let the gas release, um, let, let it release automatically through here. Usually that takes about 20 minutes. It really depends on what you're cooking. But if you are a bit impatient, you can push this. And when you're done with that, you can just hit the off button. And the off button ensures that this thing is closed. And I believe most pressure cookers work the same way. So yeah, there you go. I recommend doing the natural release, especially if you have enough time on your hands to do that. But if it's getting a bit close to dinner time, you can definitely just use the, the manual release. Now, right now, I don't have anything inside of my pressure cooker, so I'm definitely not going to turn this on. But you'll see there's a ton of different functions on here. We're going to be using the brown rice function, which you'll see sets it for 15 minutes. Um, but there's also a white rice function that cooks it a little bit less. And since I'm cooking a combination of the two, I am going to use the, the brown rice function today. Um, and yeah, we'll get back to this in a, in a second. But for now, I'm just going to turn this off and gonna unplug it because we're not gonna be using it just yet. So I'm gonna be cooking eight cups of rice in my pressure cooker today. That's a lot of rice. Um, and that's one big advantage with the pressure cooker is as you can see with this pressure cooker at least, this one can hold up to about 12 cups of uh, whatever you're cooking. Actually a little bit more because the max line is right there. And Oh, sorry, let me put that back on. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be cooking eight cups of rice here. Now, one really important thing to note is that because no water is being evaporated, do you remember how on the pot the water was evaporating? Well, because the pressure cooker is keeping all of that heat inside, none of the water is escaping as a gas, okay? Nothing's gonna be coming out of there. It's all gonna be staying inside for the most part. Um, and what's happening on the inside as well is instead of escaping the water, the gas, it's gonna build up on the sides of the pressure cooker and it's gonna do something called condensation. And basically the pressure cooker is gonna be recycling the water over and over again until it's fully absorbed into the rice. So where am I getting with this? Um, pretty much what I'm saying is you can use way less water, okay? In fact, the ratio for pressure cooker rice is for every cup of rice, you use one cup of water. So because I'm cooking eight cups of rice, I'm gonna use eight cups of water exactly. 
So luckily I have my really big measuring cup here. I don't know if you can see on the side there, but yeah, it's gonna be eight cups right on the dot. And yeah, I'll add eight cups of water to this as well. Um, you can even mix this a bit if you want it to be divided a bit more, but I, I don't really care. So yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, put this all into the pressure cooker. So along with my eight cups of rice that's already in the pressure cooker, I'm gonna add my eight cups of water to it as well. And now we're gonna turn our pressure cooker on. So let's go back here. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your lid is on properly. This is very important, especially for safety. So you wanna lock it in place, turn it all the way, and you should hear that little click sound, at least if you have a similar pressure cooker to me. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's plugged in. Mine is not at the moment. You hear that nice little beep sound there. And we're gonna pick our settings. So like I said, I'm gonna pick brown rice, even though I'm using half and half, uh, I like just using the brown rice setting. You could probably turn the, the, the time down a little bit if you want, but I'm gonna keep it like this because for me that's made pretty good rice in the past. So yeah, I'm going to just push that and turn it on. And what's happening now is it's pressurizing. Oh, I forgot one thing too. You wanna make sure that your manual exhaust is turned off. Um, yeah, you, usually it is, but you, oh, you do wanna double check for sure. So right now this thing is pressurizing and depending on what you cook, this might take a while. I think with rice, it takes about 20 minutes and then it's gonna cook for 15 and then we need to let it depressurize. So this process takes about an hour to fully cook your rice. So not too bad, but the big benefit with this is you can just put everything inside, turn it on, and then you can just leave it. You can leave it till it's done. You can even leave it a few hours after it's done. It's gonna keep a lot of that heat inside afterwards anyways. Whereas the disadvantage with a pot is you have to keep checking on it. I mean, you don't want it to burn on the bottom. Remember what I said about it overflowing as well? I find cooking rice with a pot requires a lot more attention, whereas with a pressure cooker, you can just turn it on and leave it. And then in about an hour, you have the best rice you've ever had, ever. So while my pressure cooker rice is cooking, my stovetop rice actually finished. And don't get me wrong, it's, it's pretty good rice. It, it tastes fine, it's cooked pretty good. Um, but another big downside to cooking this in a pot is you have this big mess to deal with afterwards. Um, you know, a lot of times I find rice always sticks to the bottom and, you know, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I find this happens every single time. So I'm gonna have to put this in my sink and let it let it rinse with some, uh, or let it soak with some water for, I don't know, an hour or so. And I find with the pressure cooker, cleanup is usually a little bit easier, I find. I mean, there's always gonna be cleanup. It's never gonna be perfect, but you know, I find that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pressure cooker. And that is a really, really good benefit of it as well. So the rice just beeped, which means it is done. We're gonna turn it off, I'm going to unplug it. And we're just gonna let this depressurize naturally. So it's just gonna come up very slowly through the exhaust. You can actually see it's lifted up a little bit. And yeah, I'm just gonna let that go for, I don't know, 20 minutes and then we'll, we'll take a look at it. All right, so our rice has been depressurizing for about an hour now. So um, it's safe to say that it's probably ready here. Um, now, before you open this up, you always want to do the manual uh, exhaust just to be safe. As you can see, no, nothing came out when I did that, which is okay. But you don't want to just open this thing when there's tons of pressure in it. That's really, really dangerous. Um, and it can really cause a burn. That's why you gotta be really careful with that. A lot of steam will come out. So that's why we have the exhaust just to keep it safe. Nothing came out, so we got nothing to worry about. So let's open this up. Very carefully, of course, there could still be steam coming out of there. Yeah, there you go. That is our pressure cooker rice. Now the rice on the top usually looks a bit dry, but it's actually pretty good. And once you kind of dig in there, you can see it is very, very, very perfect rice. It is really, really good. 
Um, and there's lots of it. So I have a really big batch here. And of course, we're not going to eat this all at once. So what we usually do is we will put them in these these uh, Rubbermaid containers we have here. Um, and usually for a batch this big, we'll need about five of them. And then we freeze them. And that's it. And when we're out of rice in the fridge, we'll just take one out of the freezer and we're good to go. And that is how I make pressure cooker rice. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I highly recommend investing in a pressure cooker if you've been thinking about it. Um, it's a really useful tool. I mean, I use it to make soup, curry. Of course, I use it to make rice pretty often. Um, you know, we make ribs in it too. It, there's so much you can do with these, but especially if you eat a lot of rice and you want to be able to make a lot at once, I highly recommend picking one of these up. It's, it's such a great tool to have in the kitchen. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and uh, take care.